Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to another edition of Strange Love Live. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. Tonight's guest is Steve Woodward, also known as Oregonian Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi there. And uh, should I call you Ms. Chaos or Mrs. Chaos? Uh, it's Mrs. Chaos, but you can just call me Cammy. Oh, hi, Cammy. <laughs> so, you're Oregonian Steve. I am. You're not I just am. Steve Woodward. <laughs> well, it depends on which incarnation I'm in. When I'm on the uh, when I'm on Twitter, mm-hmm. when I'm on a lot of things, MySpace, I'm Oregonian Steve, mm-hmm. which is how probably most people know me, other than like my family and my colleagues. Mm-hmm. So, um, Oregonian Steve is kind of a, my nom de plume. Are you Oregonian Steve everywhere online? Yeah, except where they uh, don't allow you to have uh, that many letters. Oh. Then I'm Oregonian Steve. Steve. So, Oregonian Steve obviously comes from the fact that you've worked for the Oregonians. It does. And in what capacity? I am a reporter, and I cover personal technology at the moment. And in Portland, that means you have a lot to cover. It does, and it's fun. I get to meet people like you. Hello. Nice to meet you. (laughs) And our studio audience, and And, Dr. Normal. And Dr. Normal, and so many others, and... I think the first time that I ever went, oh, there's a guy that just writes a whole bunch of tech stuff in Portland was when you did the Twitter article. Right. Yeah, that was really fun. Yeah? Yeah. I met a lot of Twitterers then. So, and I'd been signed up for Twitter probably for a year Mm -hmm. and hadn't really used it, but I thought, by God, it's time to write a Twitter article. Sometimes it just, you know, comes over you. So are you a really technological guy? Uh, Not really. Not in the sense of being a coder. Mm -hmm. Um, But, oh God, (laughs) thank goodness somebody else isn't. Um, But I do like to use it. Mm -hmm. I like, um, I'm a heavy social networker. Um, I like to use it for its communication aspects. So I'd, I'd like to know, my beat is more, not gadgets, but how uh, technology and society intersect. Mm-hmm. And where do you get your story ideas from? Uh, from thin air. It's I read a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, people call me. People send me press releases. Uh, they come from everywhere. Yeah. What were some of your more popular articles, your more popular pieces? Or uh, pieces that you were particularly proud of in the technology arena. Oh, technology? Okay, rats. We'll get to the rest of them in a minute. Okay. Well, actually, the Twitter thing mm-hmm. probably was the most popular tech article I've ever written. I got so much response, and people are still trying to uh, follow me, signing up to follow me. Because wow. they keep finding the article. Mm-hmm. So, and besides that, let's see, I've done a story on uh, how MySpace is being used by baby boomers wow. instead of by uh, young people and how that evolved. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other goodies. It'll come to me in a second. Well, you said you not so much didn't so much concentrate on gadgets, but did you didn't you write an article about? I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember how to phrase it. It was about Josh Bancroft. Oh yeah, and his gadgetry. The uh, it was really about. He was. I think we called it the geek of geeks. Mm-hmm. And my editor said, "You know, I want you to go out and find the geekiest guy you can find, mm-hmm. and just profile him, because I want to know, you know, what's on his." Uh, mp3 player i want to know what video games he plays i want to know every gadget he has and actually i'd met josh um you know i forget he's everywhere so (laughs) i met him somewhere (laughs) and of course he's unforgettable Mm -hmm. so i knew exactly who to go for 
And uh, that was before I met a lot of other geeks who mm-hmm. were probably even geekier. geekier. But uh, yeah, I called up Josh and he was all up for it. And uh, so we just, he came in, we, he laid out every gadget, he emptied his cargo pants. <laughs> he has something like uh, a dozen pairs of cargo pants, all identical. To hold his gadgetry? To hold his gadgetry. Wow. Uh, digital cameras, uh, digital recorders, um, you know, several phones, video games, you name it. They're all there. His Bluetooth, he's, he's got them in his belt, in his pockets. That makes for some heavy pants. <laughs> uh, it does, you know, and in honor of Josh, I actually went out to Eddie Bauer a couple of weeks ago and bought my first pair of cargo pants. Wow. How are you liking those? Well, you know, I felt uh, really self-conscious in them. Mm-hmm. I filled up all the pockets with cameras and stuff, <laughs> <laughs> went to work, and um, actually on me, the the pockets kind of swayed back and forth, <laughs> so I felt like a uh, uh, kind of a large ship Which crossing kinda, the Atlantic yeah. as uh, as I walked. But uh, it also felt really cool. Yeah, I felt very cool. Yeah. So, are you the uh, reporter at the Oregonian that pretty much is the James Bond reporter? Like you have the latest technology, and that you're. Well, you know, my my wife uh, will not let me have an iPhone. Oh, really? Oh, no. No, no. She controls, uh, she controls the uh-huh. spending in that category. Really? But, I, you know, if I were on my own, I would probably own every kind of gadget there is. There you go. Yeah. So I'm a would-be, I'm a wannabe, but I'm a don't-have. So what's, mm-hmm. what's the key piece of technology you use? Is it your laptop or...? That's probably my laptop. I have a Palm Pilot. There you go. Oh, the uh, Palm Pilot. Yeah, I was. I remember the first time I ever saw a Palm Pilot. I was. Mm-hmm. I was so fascinated with it. And right. I really coveted it. Was it the green screen? I think it was the green screen. Yeah. It was a U.S. Robotics. Yeah. Uh, the model. original. Yeah. Old school. The original. So I got one of those, and I think mine was U.S. Robotics too. And and. Yep. Uh, yep. I think I lost it. Oh no! So you were saying that the Twitter article was the most popular that you'd written on technology. Now, was that popular amongst geeks, or were you just getting a lot of inquiries just in the general readership? Going, what is this Twitter thing? Well, you know, it's kind of both. It was, uh, I think, a lot of Twitters actually caught mm-hmm. on to that. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it spread like wildfire, thanks to Twitter. And we actually uh, had a... So you broke Twitter with that article. I broke Twitter. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the farewell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's nice to be responsible exactly. for that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, one of our... When we put it online at Oregon Live, uh, Mark Friesen, who's one of the... Uh, my colleagues at the Oregonian, actually built a Twitter feed into the, uh, the page. Right. And uh, it was... It was fascinating to watch the the it's traffic roll still over there that. It on is? the on the uh, on the page. If you can find it, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can find it, yeah. Just don't use that search function. <laughs> so, before you were a technology reporter, how'd you start out? Uh, start out. Let's see. At the Oregonian, this my career goes back. Do we want to start at the beginning and then come to the end, or do we want to work our way back chronologically? Oh, I just, uh, I always like the beginning and the end, so, okay. you know. We, well, it all started at a 50,000-watt radio station in Fresno, California. There we go. Oh, Fresno? I no. Was, oh, because I was born in Fresno. So Sorry. I was all excited for a moment. <laughs> really? Fresno? You, yes. were, you were born in Fresno. You can no never way. trust wow. what a reporter says. <laughs> Actually, I stole that line from exactly. Mary Tyler Moore. What was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah, watch yeah, Mary Tyler Yeah, Luke Grant. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, no, actually, I started at the Kansas City Star. Mm-hmm. I was—I really wanted to be a science writer, worse than anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, with it, but they started me as a bureau reporter. Then I moved to City Hall, and finally, I became the science writer and was immediately recruited away by the Kansas City Business Journal, which was mm-hmm. just getting started up. So, I actually spent the next probably eleven years as a business. Uh, reporter and editor 
And then, let's see, both in Kansas City, came to Portland for the Business Journal here, went to Hartford, Connecticut for one miserable year. Now, was that uh, pure business or was that kind of technology? It was business business. business. Just, just, just general business just beat reporter. General business. Mm-hmm. But... Um, and I was the reason I was a little worried about going there is uh, at first was that I thought I'd be bored to death, uh, but actually we covered business in Kansas City like uh, like cops cover, mm-hmm. like uh, reporters cover the cop shop, a lot of shoe leather. We uncovered murder for hire schemes and Ooh, wow and big money, hot dirty money, business, dirty business. It was really <laughs> it was it was very cool. That's I loved that cool. job. Uh, our editor did weird things like uh, hire private eyes to come in and sweep the office for bugs. And wow, yeah, did it, they find them? It's a hell of a business hard, community you got there in school. Kansas City. Did they well, find bugs? Mafia there. Oh yeah, that's right. Kansas City, La Cosa Nostra, right? You know. Yeah, yeah. And a healthy blues scene. Yeah. Both. Yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. One of the birthplace of the where the blues, you know, where where the music. Uh, sort joke. of grows up is usually where the wise guys are too Kansas City Jazz yeah so let's see so anyway business was a blast it turned out mm-hmm. and um, I ended up back in Portland back in 88 I finally uh, we missed Portland terribly yeah never should have moved away but it took us a couple of years to get back and in 88 I got back at the uh, Oregonian, mm-hmm. and uh, was business editor there for four years, and found out that I am not cut out to be middle management <laughs> in a large organization. I just... You really want to be a reporter? Really? I, On I wanted to be a reporter again. That's great. Um, so anyway, I went to the living section and covered, oh, just, I mean, living. everything. <laughs> yeah, everyday life. Real people, um, and let's see. I I covered healthcare and about um, when was it? Ninety it was the late nineties. We started a Tech Northwest section, mm-hmm. and I volunteered, and I covered the entire dot com rise and bust. Wow! Wow! And that was that was very cool. Uh, I spent a lot of time in downtown loft buildings with exposed uh, brick walls sure. and uh, people uh, working out of uh, desks that were, you know, the, the doors laid on mm-hmm. on uh, file cabinets and people sitting in puffy inflatable chairs. <laughs> um, so the startup scene's got to be pretty. Of dollars. Startup scene's got to be pretty exciting to yep, cover. It was because of that, because of the there was, exuberance that you have when you you've got a company and uh, you've got the puffy chairs and the, yeah, the, you know, I'm, and then the, you, six months later you watch them, you know, implode. You have all the hope yeah. in the world, and then you have lots of tears yeah. and screaming. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it was fun while it lasted. It was uh-huh. it was a great party. Uh, a lot of really energetic. Uh, young, smart people. Mm-hmm. I loved being around them all. Uh, and they had some great ideas. See, it, it wasn't that the technology was bad mm-hmm. or any of that. It was just overvalued. Mm-hmm. So uh, a lot of these companies actually are still around, which is surprising. They actually survived the dot-com bust, uh, but it's we actually killed the Northwest or the Tech Northwest section. Mm-hmm. While I was on vacation, I came back and they told me <laughs> yeah. my job wasn't there anymore. Oh no! Yeah, that's not tech is over. Not. Tech is over. Tech is tech, done. Yeah, there will be no tech more tech dead. now. No more technology in Portland. I'm sorry. So, uh, because we eliminated our coverage, it seemed like all of tech had collapsed. Right, but it actually hadn't. Mm-hmm. Some companies went away. So you were responsible for the tech. Uh, bubble bursting then too. I'm guilty. So, so the fail Twitter, whale and fail the whale. demise yeah. of tech. Yeah, yeah. this okay. is this was big fail whale. And you're an important man. You've I caused am. a lot of disasters. And it seems like deja vu <laughs> all over again. Yes, exactly. Only in the financial Yeah, were you just recently reporting on the economy because I, oh, I must oh, have been. That's not going very well. Exactly. I must have been. Sorry. So what is the most uh, aside from the Twitter the recent 
Twitter article. Um, can you think of it, any stories that you reported on or not in the tech or community? In, individuals yeah. that you, you aside just from really, the tech work that we've talked about, what 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 it was something that you're very proud of or that people really responded to? Oh, you mean like the naked bike ride? There the you naked go. bike ride. We're going to get into some of that fun stuff later. <laughs> you can talk about it now. It's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, were you in, in bed on that? <laughs> uh, not exactly. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, I am... You weren't pro- wearing the flak jacket and the... Uh, yeah. No, I was... <laughs> and no pants. I was a professional. <laughs> yes. I was wearing boxers. There we go. There you yeah. go. I mean, you know, I had to per, uh, yeah. keep up my professional appearances. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I actually worked, had to work a late Saturday Saturday night shift. This naked bike ride begins at midnight. Mm-hmm. I had to work till eleven thirty in the office, uh, covering the Coast Guard rescuing people, and I call it the dead body um, shift mm-hmm. when you have to work late Saturday night. So I had a half hour between eleven thirty and noon to like race across the bridge where they were all gathering on Hawthorne. Get my bike out, uh, strip down, <laughs> throw all my clothes in a backpack, <laughs> and uh, mount my camera on my handlebars. And by this time, hundreds and hundreds of naked people on bikes were rolling by. And I couldn't get my camera to work. Just to clarify, this wasn't Kansas City. This was Portland. This yeah. was Portland. <laughs> this, this would never happen in Kansas City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is why you wanted to come back to Portland, clearly. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There were lots of draws here. <laughs> so uh, so all these naked people were going by, and I was struggling with all this equipment and finally got it all on, and, and most of them were gone. And I pedaled like hell across the uh, Hawthorne Bridge trying to catch up with them. And uh, I had lots of video of the backs of a few stragglers. <laughs> and uh followed them i couldn't catch up with the main crowd i couldn't figure out where they'd gone so i just kept up with uh several nude bikers and um and we put the video up and i think we got four thousand hits on that which was at the time a record for an oregon live video naked people on bicycles is always a big thing yeah people seem to find that video they can't find anything else but they found that video yeah that's that's the kind of thing you can always look for oh yeah so Oregon Live, um, the print, you know, media, Oregonian, you coming from the print media, but you're covering technology. Where do you see the print media, the future of print media and technology traditional I- intersecting now? I mean, here we are in almost going into 09. Yeah. Uh, newspapers have lost a great deal of revenue mm-hmm. on their classifieds due to sites like Craigslist. Bless you, um, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> and and advers- advertising the, the same, I would imagine. Yeah. What do you mm-hmm. see, where, where do you see the future of the Oregonian and, and traditional print media like that? Oh, uh, much different, much smaller, much more niche. Um, like regional type papers, like the, the small neighborhood papers that well, we have around I, here? You know, I, I think what's, what's happening is that... Um, the large national papers and the really small papers like the Hollywood Star and and small town papers are going to rebound from this mm-hmm. as soon as the economy turns around. But it's all the midsize, the the regional papers like the Oregonian and Milwaukee Sentinel and Kansas City Star, that, that size, uh, where we're going to see, not the Oregonian, but some of the other ones, we're going to see bankruptcies mm-hmm. probably within a year. I would guess. A few um, of them have already gone that way, right? Or have been bought out? Well, the, no big one has gone bankrupt yet. But um, Some have come close before they've been bought out by larger entities. Eh? Right. Seems and the recall. Minneapolis Star Tribune, for, for yeah. instance, missed a $9 million debt payment mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. just recently. Uh, a bunch of these guys are missing debt payments. A journal register company, which... Um, owns 22 papers. I don't know where they are, but those 22 papers total uh, 
are worth three hundred thirteen thousand dollars right now oh my God. on the market. Oh, wow! So you know, I'm guessing that you could probably trade your house for twenty two for a twenty two newspaper chain. Wow! If, uh, if you want to, hmm. <laughs> what would I do with twenty two newspapers? No, not worth it. I like my house. <laughs> okay, okay. You could cover twenty two naked bike rides in twenty two cities. <laughs> That's true. I don't know if there's the twenty two cities that would. But why would we do that when we could start our own blog and our own uh, news enterprise on for the internet free. for free? Yes, actually, right? you know, and that, that's the yeah, that is the problem. Uh, papers are losing circulation, as you probably heard. The Columbian up in Vancouver is close to bankruptcy now. Mm. At least they're talking about it. Um, and they're moving. They're moving back into their old mm. building. They built a brand new building and moved into it earlier this year. And um, I forget. Realized that wasn't a very good idea. <laughs> no, I guess uh, I guess they kind of found that out a little too late. Mm-hmm. Um, then let's see the Oregonian itself is downsizing downsizing yeah. undergoing some change yes mm-hmm. yes revamping the paper mm-hmm. I'm working on some of those changes myself mm-hmm. um, in fact one of them was the tech page which mm-hmm. moved from the cover of business to the how we live section which is where I work mm-hmm. Hmm. So it, that just happened last week, so you may not have noticed yet. I don't read the paper. It's a hard paper. <laughs> you know, neither does anyone else, <laughs> in, including Sarah Palin, as I understand. So there's you're a not lot alone. that she doesn't do. So yeah, it was it yeah. was um, well. <laughs> years you know years back in the tech bubble that you know, um, I know myself and and I'm sure several people started moving away from that print media and going directly to the internet, you know, the, the different news aggregators and, right. and, and being able to customize Google homepage, right. Is a, is a, is competition as well, you know, and that I use Google homepage. Sure. That's my homepage. A lot of people use Yahoo. Um, you know, probably nobody under 40, Mm-hmm. Ashley subscribes to the Oregonian, really, or any other major daily newspaper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, we just people just don't read that anymore because they're used to going to the internet uh, for their news. Um, so that's one reason advertisers are moving away. Uh, How about a larger online presence, though? Do you see like? The Oregonian continuing to refine its oh, yeah. online to presence. Work on. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Work on <laughs> work uh, on what they've done. Jackhammer. <laughs> um, the yeah, the um, that's going to happen. Definitely, mm-hmm. that's going to yeah. happen. Uh, that's part of the master plan here. Is that the print side's going to shrink? There's no doubt about it. Everyone acknowledges that. That mm-hmm. that's not the future futures the internet so um so more and more of the staff is moving toward online and for more people are learning how to shoot video and um screw around with audio oh, and more and, multimedia more right and we're moving to more daily postings mm-hmm. i think our volume at oregon live has gone up from has doubled to one million views mm. a month from a year ago, mm-hmm. which is a lot. So, uh, and it's gotten, I, I must say, I, Oregon Live has gotten better, although I don't know whether it's better with this latest redesign. So do you, do you, see, um, do you see, for lack of a better term, citizen journalism playing into this as well? Uh, there was a famous incident, I think, earlier this week on... CNN's webpage where somebody had posted a a uh, that uh, apparently Steve Jobs had apparently had a heart attack and took the stock way down and it was a citizen journalist type site on CNN and of course the 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 report was false and uh, you know supposedly CNN said it was they vet the stories mm-hmm. but uh, this one got through uh, what are the risks there I mean do you see more involvement with people in the community to just Putting in stories or more balance there. Or? Well, I, you know, I made what would a lot of vision. Be I made a lot of money on that particular one with <laughs> with jobs. Yeah. But, um, so fail well, um, yeah. the stock bubble in the all of it, two thousand in the Steve Jobs. Yeah, 
I need yeah, to get on your I'm, plan. <laughs> I'm a regular. Uh, You've got a great portfolio right born now. Born identity myself. <laughs> if I have a bad day, I'm just going to start blaming you. Yeah. It's obviously I'm, Steve's fault. <laughs> yeah. I just, you know. I'm a, a scapegoat. Yeah. Professional Very scapegoat. Convenient. The uh, that CNN incident mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. actually was um, no. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of another one. Uh, well, there have been other examples. There have been other examples, right? Yeah. Um, the citizen journalism, no doubt, is going to become more of a factor. I mean, already the um, what we're putting up on Oregon, like we're inviting videos from mm-hmm. and photos from people and, um, and and we're opening up the comments section finally oh and really Why? yeah although those comments do get moderated mm-hmm. good so I think they should be moderated well as a news yeah, site we don't want yeah we don't want libelous things or right or uh, just uh, absolute um, flaming attacks spam ripping. or hate mongering or yeah yeah so we try to keep that off the site. Um, as far as you know, the factual things. I'm mean, somebody posting that Steve Jobs died. I I think we'd check that out, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. before we put something like that up. You would, but apparently not everyone would. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, CNN just doesn't have quite the high standards that, or the resources that we. Well, do. I mean, it was you know, in in their defense, I mean, it was I mean, it was their moderate they vet these things you know it's, one slip through right it's it ridiculous happens. that you know, they couldn't figure it i mean that's a kind of you, you see steve jobs name you flag that you check it and you go exactly. oh exactly steve's job dead in Especially the same sentence a news item that's you know taking down the stock at the time yeah um yeah someone's in you know gets in trouble there so but on on the other hand i mean the oregonian has made mistakes too in the sure. heat, heat of uh following a breaking news story. Uh, if you mm-hmm. remember the Kim family who was yes. lost mm-hmm. up in the uh, uh, mountains, we reported that uh, James Kim was found alive Ooh. when the rescuers got to him. And believe me, that post got taken down within about mm-hmm. a minute and a half once the word came through that actually he was dead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, it got through. And that just happens sometimes when you're in hot pursuit. That, I think that was one example that I recall that citizen journalism did play a part. Because I know that there were people in Oregon, people who were familiar with the area and the terrain, mm-hmm. who were posting on a lot of blogs and a lot of comments as to what they thought was going on and where they felt people should should search and what the weather's like. Because, right. again, on the... In that case, if you're on the ground in that area in Oregon at that time of year, you know what the weather's like, you know what the terrain is like, and you know where people should start looking. I was actually really surprised that people actually were studying that story to try and Mm -hmm. find the family. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that that kind of story plays to people's better instincts. I mean, people want to be helpful Mm -hmm. more than they want to be destructive, I think. Um, the way I look at it is uh, people in general, crowd, I believe in the wisdom of crowds. Mm-hmm. And if there are a million and a half people out there, I have to figure that they're smarter than I am. Um, Which is interesting because I don't think every reporter would feel that way. No, some people have egos, uh-huh. one or two. Um, and I think newspapers... Uh, people in newspapers have been so used to being in control of information mm-hmm. for so long. I mean, newspapers have been around for 400 years now. We've been in control for mm, 395 of those years. Yeah. It's tough to give that up. Um, the internet I, is very threatening. It is. And you have to really say, okay, readers are now in control. They don't have to read you. Mm-hmm. They can go anywhere they want, and we have to acknowledge that, and we have to kind of harness the power that's out there. You know, I, I don't think that we're going to see a lot of citizens suddenly take on the job of journalists, because mm-hmm. they don't want to. I mean, they have right. day jobs, and 
uh, it's just it's time consuming and yeah. it's a lot of work to track down stories. Yeah. Uh, they would rather that we just did our jobs. Uh, but I think people want input, which is why they comment. And, you know, I would I would love to see us just take more advice from readers, really connect with them and have them uh, suggest stories. But it, it's sometimes, though, it seems um, in defense of journalism that, um, <laughs> you know, it's like throw everything you ever learned out from journalism school and uh, and go on the Internet and do what the Internet does, what bloggers do. And, and it seems like, yes, um, to a certain degree, there's 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 there can be some better, more immediate information mm-hmm. from the Internet. But at the same time. Is it such a good idea to throw all those those journalism practices out and have a free for all? And I'm not suggesting that we do that because mm-hmm. I think there will all be always be a role for professional journalists. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be the format that they practice in. That it's not going to be the this. medium as opposed to right, and that uh, we don't necessarily when we uh, as journalists distribute information, we don't speak as as an authoritative mm-hmm. uh, voice from God but that you know we had, uh, acknowledge that we have limits that we put the information out there but we might be wrong we might be incomplete you know if I write a piece it's only I'm only a human so even though I'm a trained journalist there's a lot of information that I might not necessarily have access to. So if I get feedback, then I can improve my own journalism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So feedback is good. Feedback is very good. Before we go, I have two questions for you. Yes, ma'am. One, did you always want to be a journalist? Did you know growing up that's what you wanted to do? Um, I don't know what I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. I don't think I... Actually, I didn't decide to become a journalist till after I graduated from college. And I was going to become the great American novelist. Mm-hmm. And I was working on uh, short stories and things like that while delivering prescriptions uh, for a pharmacy wow. and having a, a nice little life. And the college where I graduated from said, uh, I, uh, known uh, while well, I was a presidential scholar so mm-hmm. the college uh, university Wright State University in Dayton Ohio said oh we can't have you delivering prescriptions why don't you come work in our PR department so I spent probably two of the most miserable years of my life working in mm-hmm. PR I'm just not a PR person mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> I can identify with that uh, so Two years later, I said, you know, these reporters seem to be having a lot more fun than me, and I think I want to go be a journalist. So at that point, let's see, how old was I? 24, Mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, I went to the University of Missouri Journalism School, spent two years, uh, got a master's degree, fell in love with journalism, and that's where I ended up. I'm glad you did. Yeah. Okay, yeah. question number two. Was there something you wanted to tell us? I don't know that I wanted to tell you, but I will. Is there something you're going to tell us? Yes. Um, I'm leaving the Oregonian after 20 years. My goodness. Yes, I'm taking their generous buyout offer. And I'm leaving as of the end of election week, and I'm going to do some kind of online web news and information business. Wonderful. So you'll still be with us? I will be. But you'll just be with us in a different capacity? Yes. In a more... Still a journalist. Technology-friendly capacity. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of things that I've been wanting to do. A lot of... um, I want to push the envelope of journalism, Mm -hmm. see how far it can go in the 21st century. And... Maybe make a little money at it, too. That would be a good thing. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you very much. I'm really excited about it. I want to get going now. But you have to wait another month and a half? 
ish. Uh, four weeks. You never know when that, that election's going to be over, by the way. So you could be there for a few more years. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All the recounting that we're going to have to uh, you know, no, mumble, mumble. So. Yeah. Mumble, mumble. Right. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Steve, for joining us on the show. Well, you're welcome. It was a real pleasure, Gammy. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Please join us next week for Strange Love Life, and we're going to have Melissa Lyon and Miss Burroughs on for our sex Q&A. Good night, everybody.